écoute, Israël Manuel Cortez, Yomo, producer, composer, mixer, engineer, artist, director, and the list goes on and on and on. And this year, this year, you were nominated for a Juno, for Engineer of the Year. Bravo, bravo, Coritimus, Garitiria. Thank well, you, Thank you. And not only you were nominated in the engineering category, but you're the first female to yeah. make a short list. How did that feel? Um, uh, honestly, it was a shock uh, at first because I wasn't expecting it. You know, you always submit your name for these things, but you you never know, right? Um, and then, yeah, and then I realized that I was the first woman and that w that seemed kind of bizarre to me that that was the case because I didn't, I wasn't aware that that was the case. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's an immense honor for sure. And we, I was talking about it earlier. It's, we celebrate you as a collective. We celebrate you as a female, as a young female. And we also add the layer of being of Hellenic descent to that. So how, how has the community approached you about this? Um, I mean, I've always had immense support from my family and the community. So I, it's been incredible. I've always felt embraced, you know, even when I was struggling and trying to make a, a living out of being an artist, right? Um, yeah, and that, and that cultural support and base, I think, has been very empowering for me. Um, it's given me a lot of strength to go through this profession. So, And let's talk a little bit about the gender balance. Mm -hmm. And not when it comes to performers, because I think we've made a big progress when it comes to that aspect. But in terms of producers and engineers like yourself, is it still male-dominated? Absolutely. I think the latest figure was... Uh, it's just a little over 2%. So it's in the entire profession. Wow. Um, so yeah, there's a substantial gap when it comes to technical, uh, technical profession within the music industry. But I do think that, um, you know, that that is changing, especially now that technology is becoming more readily available, like a lot of women are entering the profession independently, and they're able to essentially start off with a computer in their houses and start exploring. That's how I started when I was like 15, 16 years old, is I had a laptop and I started to record my own songs. So I think that that is definitely going to because it changes the climate in which people um, enter the profession, right? And there's already in the last two years because we have been at home, right? And a lot of um, female artists have been stuck at home and they're not touring. So even they're getting into production now. And, and I've seen a massive um, change in that regard. Which is always positive. You know, it's always interesting to me because when we say producers or engineers, we never say a male producer. We never say a male engineer. But for some reason, we still need to attach the female part to it sometimes. Mm -hmm. How far are we from changing that discourse, in your opinion? I don't know. I, I mean, I said the other day, I'm hoping that in the next 10 years, we don't have to add that, <laughs> that as like a, a disclaimer before we announce someone's profession. I understand why it exists. You know, it's something that always um, agitated me before, because as you said, like, I don't refer to my... Uh, male peers as male producers um, but I think now it's important for just for the visibility and representation factor right and I think that ultimately is what ends up moving the needle or closing that gender gap it's when you can see yourself represented then that becomes a possibility right and that's why I think this nomination is so important it's that we can now finally see ourselves in that space now the Grammys did it 23 years before us so the the junos were a bit behind in that regard but i do believe all these things are about timing we've had historically other professions that were male dominated as well like the medical profession even the teaching profession um, or architecture like my mom was an architect and when she was in school i think she was one of two or three women in the entire program and now most of the <laughs> architects i meet are women right so i think it's just a time thing and we're in a really um, beautiful transition right now where I'm hoping, yeah, in the next decade, it's not even going to be a part of the conversation. Hopefully, it's just going to be the new normal. And, and it's beautiful that, and I know this personally, that you're very involved with the community. You do a lot of mentorship. So succeeding, you're creating the path for the next generation of women who are in engineering or producing or the technical aspect to walk on that and go even further. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I think that's so important because um, 
in, in my case, I wouldn't be where I am right now without mentorships. I think it's so important to um, create that space to have encouragement um, as a developing artist or engineer producer. Um, and that just kind of opens up opportunities for you. So I believe in paying that forward. Λοιπόν, πάμε σε ένα διαλυματάκι, we'll be back, because I want to ask you what's next in your life. So stay tuned, αγαπημένοι μου κριτές, don't go anywhere. Phil Kirkwood is here, εδώ στη παρεούλα μας. The first female to ever be nominated for the engineering category of the Junos. Stay tuned. Επιστρέψαμε εδώ στη παρεούλα μας, Phil Kirkwood is. Λοιπόν, Helmo, you've worked with some of the biggest names in Canadian music scene. You've even played with The Weeknd. So what's next for you? Um, well, the foreseeable future is pretty much production and writing is what I've been focused on. Uh, so making a lot of records with some artists. Um, I've been working with some incredible artists in the scene. Um, some of them are, you know, Digging Roots and Amanda Rayom and this up and coming artist, Jason Abbey. So really excited those records will be coming out in the next year. Do you purposely seek out women when you work? Uh, not necessarily. I, I'm. I pretty much seek out artists that I obviously connect with. I think that's the most important part because for me, it's not just about making random music. I think it's um, it's such a vulnerable and involved process. And I think that you need to really build um, a relationship with the people that you work with um, just to get, because the whole purpose of music is to be as honest as possible, I think. And, and so I don't think that you can forge that relationship uh, superficially. You know, so usually that's that's the main um, criteria that I have to work with somebody. And um, I think a lot of women have come to me just because that has never been a part of their experience in recording music before, um, because there aren't a ton of women producing. But that's not to say that I don't work with men. I work with a ton of men as well. So, yeah, it's just a personality and, and chemistry, really, at the end of the day. And it's very important that you have the idea of inclusivity because you make people feel comfortable. And generally speaking, the studies have shown that even from managerial positions, women tend to do better because we listen. We're more catering to people's needs. So that could also be a reason why you connect with certain people versus other male producers would not. Yeah, I think it's definitely, it comes down to the, the person's style, right? And, and for me, I think there is an innate nurturing side. So that definitely plays a role in my approach to how I do my job. Um, I, I like to think of it as holistic in nature, because yes, there, there is a technical aspect, but we're also dealing with people that are empathic, right? And I think that there's almost like a psychology side to, to what, what a producer does as well. Yeah. You have to manage emotions at the same time as you manage the music part. Yeah, holding space and also just creating a, a comfortable enough environment so that people can then start taking creative risks, right? Because that requires vulnerability. So, Do you find the pandemic was helpful to you? I think in a lot of ways, yes, because it, I think the pandemic became a bit of an equalizer in that everybody was kind of stuck in the same place when it came to, to the industry. Um, and I think out of that, because artists traditionally have had to be very resilient people, right? Because we're always dealing with unpredictable circumstances. Um, so I think it, it set up a really interesting climate where we we're able to kind of settle in the space and become self-sufficient, you know? And for me, um, I primarily work out of a home studio, but I took the opportunity to actually move up my five-year plan of leaving the city. And I moved just north of the city where now my studio is in my house. And I was kind of working remotely with some artists um, at certain phases of the project. I hadn't done a complete album remotely uh, before the pandemic, but you know, with technology and how that's caught up nowadays, it really allowed me to get into that space of like, okay, we have to figure out how to do this. We have to become resourceful and just find a way to keep going. Mm -hmm. And it's really amazing that once we're all collectively in that space, how quickly it came together. Like I've made full albums without having met the artist face to face in the last two years. Wow. Still, so. And it just, Reality, you adapt, you adapt to reality and yeah. you use technology that is given to us to move forward. Mm -hmm. And Helmo, I've had the pleasure of meeting your father, who's very well known in the Greek community, <laughs> like years and years of Omni television, Spiros Kurkutis. So, and we just celebrated Greek Independence Day. So how do you think your heritage, your Hellenic heritage has impacted you and your career? Um, well, there is 
you know, the artistic component, I've been very influenced by my heritage artistically. I grew up listening to Greek music and it's been uh, and not even music, like the theater, the art, the, you know, all of the film. Um, so that's been a huge influence um, to, to my career. I don't necessarily produce Greek music yet, um, but it is it is de definitely something that lives within myself, right? That ancestry, that power that comes from your ancestry. And I do think that coming from a strong culture just gives you such a solid base mm -hmm. just for your life, right? And I, I, we've always been involved with the Greek community growing up. Um, and that just gave me a really solid ground and community just to have, to have around me, right? Have you ever thought of dabbling into like the Greek music? Oh, I have a, quite a few times. Like I just, I wouldn't even know where to start because I'm so <laughs> entrenched in this side of the world. But um, I mean, I, I love Greek music. I love Greek artists. I go to the concerts whenever they come to town or whatever. I'm in Greece. I love going to the Buzuki. Yeah, so <laughs> Greek artist. Um, that's really hard. I really love Kari Salixiu. Um, she's one of my favorites. But I also love, you know, I grew up listening to Keti Garbi and Desfina Vandi. And like, oh, we're 90s babies. We yeah, love so that, that I really, I still listen to those records. Like I'll be cooking in the kitchen on the weekend and I'll just turn them right up. Uh, so yeah, I, I, love, love I love all of it. I love it. And before I let you go, a piece of advice to all young artists who are listening to us and they have no idea how to go about it. What do you say? Um, I would say just as cliche as it may sound, but this was my experience and I can only speak from that is just dive in. If you have the idea in your head and you know that it's something you want to explore, there is no time, appropriate time, I think, to, to try it out. I think you just have to go and do it. Um, and ask for help along the way, ask for some advice. That, that was one of the first things I did when I was 12 years old and I started my first band. I had no idea how to start a band or perform in venues or any of that, or even like, how do you manage a band practice? Like, and I ended up emailing all of my favorite artists and some of them wrote back and oh. gave me advice, right? And so I think it's, you have to take the ego and the fear out of it, even though everything is scary. I think like every single thing, every single new album I produce is scary to me. Um, I'm days? always, even still, like I still get paralyzed with fear and anxiety for a minute. And then I say, okay, well, I, I know that I can't fail. So I just need to dive in and figure it out. And I think that that's the case with a lot of life, right? It's not even just entering a career in the arts. It's we don't know what to expect. And, and really, it's just a matter of get, getting in there and then figuring it out based on what environment you find yourself in. So, so just do it. Just do it. Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no rule book, especially in the music industry. It's like the Wild West. There is no, there is no formula, right? So you kind of have to write your own history. I like that. Write your own history. Be your own author. Can I say that again? Sicharitiria, sicharitiria, sicharitiria for this nomination. And hopefully we get to see you in the Grammys. I don't know. What's next? What's the best <laughs> thing I can wish I, you? I, I'm just going to try keep making the records. That's all. That's all I'm, <laughs> I'm here to do. Keep making your own history then. Yeah. Yeah. Λοιπόν, ευχαριστώ πολύ. Φιλάκια πολλά. Ευχαριστώ, φιλάκια.